I can hear you. Or I could hear you. It's really quick. There we go. Sorry, who have we got there? Just see the top of your head. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, sorry, I can hear somebody's dog. That's going to be Muliani. There we go. Now we can't hear the dog anymore. All right, who's here this week? Less people than last week because they've been watching Bitcoin go down. Is that the story? Are you there, Matt? Um, I can't hear anybody else. I'm here. Yep. Okay. Well, I can hear one person. Can't hear Miliani. And hello. Yes. Sorry. Who we got there? It's Jeremy. It's Jeremy. JT. Welcome. Hey. How you going? Thank you. And finally Bernard's worked out my microphone issues. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard just popped in as well. And we've got Billy. Welcome, Mr. William. Excellent. Excellent. So a couple of you guys weren't here last week. I'm hoping you have managed to watch the uh, previous videos. It'll show our hands. Bernard, yes. Watch the previous videos. Understand the homework. No idea what's going on. You just came along and... Thank you for coming along. So have we got any questions or queries from the homework from last week or questions from the people who weren't here last week? I'm, I'm waiting for you, Verna. Yeah, hi Jeremy, my name is Gusto. I'm uh, Lynn's husband. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, and uh, yeah, she just uh, happened to tell me that uh, there is actually recordings. Uh, so, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that, so uh, I don't basically know anything, but you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm here now, so you know. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, the, the recordings are up on the krillionaire.com website. Oh, okay. um, Muliani is the tech support. So the first week um, I succeeded in just recording one of the people who was watching. So there was no sound and just a picture of Matt smiling at his screen. Um, okay. But Muliani rescued me and, and found the original video and saved that. And then last week after, after we finished up, I forgot to end the meeting. I just closed the computer and walked away and it ended up recording all night. So instead of being a one hour video, it was a 13 hour video and oh, Muliani wow. rescued me again <laughs> by editing 13 hours of, of darkness back down to one hour of light. So there we go. Uh, but Lin Lindsay was, was here last week and I think the week before, um, yeah, and right. she profiled see a coin for us. We're, we're all profiling a couple of coins and sharing it with everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so we can find out, you know, which ones are good and which ones might not be so good. Sometimes you might think it's really good and then everyone else goes, no, 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 don't touch that one. So mm -hmm. it's a little, little bit of group homework to help everybody. I see, and I see. Um, okay. we, we answer each other's questions. I mean, I, I probably know 5% more than, than what someone else does. Um, so that's why I'm facilitating the meeting, but I'm, I'm rapidly learning in this new space. So... Mm -hmm. What what coin what coins are you holding at the moment, Gustav? Oh, there's actually a list of twenty five different coins, uh, but I think we are trying to target the top twenty at least. Yes, yeah, good move. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I don't know if it's like 
areas of of, of interest really um, yeah. uh, on, on top of that um, so if you feel strong about something um, as in me medical you know uh, Mariana or something you know yeah, maybe yeah. get some popcorn and, and stuff like that if you believe in that I guess we, yeah, yes we, yeah that's we actually, 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 actually one that I looked at this week as well is the um, the medical marijuana um, mm. and there's one that's actually uh, it's using your, your thumbprint technology on your iPhone so you could mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. dose yourself um, but no one else could actually smoke your weed unless they had your thumbprint so I thought that was interesting, Ooh. you know. So, oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you, you, using technology to make sure someone else doesn't take your take your prescription, so to speak. So, oh. very good. So, you, you you've chosen those in line with your core values, just whatever you feel strongly about. Your search for the medical coin or for the whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's. I guess you have to. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, also, if you can say that something is going to be there in 5, 10, 20 years, you know, if you believe that, I reckon then I'll, I'll, I'll put some money down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's, a, there's a few very, um, what we call like sort of socially responsible things. There's ones that's um, like Habitat for Humanity, um, you know, building affordable housing for the homeless people and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and green energy and, and a lot of these ones where you can actually trade energy and cutting out the middleman. So there's some very exciting, exciting projects going on in the field. So we, we've mm. talked briefly about the medical marijuana one. Is there another one that you'd like to share with us that you've been researching? Um, uh, I would say I'm a bit interested in Cardano, actually. We have Cardano, yep. but, you know, um, and... Um, yeah, I'm researching that at the moment. So, you know, I'm um, a former or a co-founder of uh, Ethereum uh, startup Cardano. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I just think that that's going to be a, a potential uh, Ethereum slayer. Yeah. But I don't know about that. But, uh, what yeah, what do you like best about Ca Cardano? Uh, just started to do the research. But as far as I understand, it's not really a blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was... Yeah, I don't know the name, uh, but again, I I don't know enough to to talk about it. But yeah. uh, if it's not a blockchain, it could be a good thing to have in your portfolio. Yeah, um, for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, I think there's you know there's blockchains and there's tangles and there's hash graphs and there's all sorts of stuff and it's it's hard to keep up with the technology but as long as you you understand basically what it does um, then you can explain it to someone else you know like obviously Bitcoin you're transferring money from person to person without using a bank um, and some some of the other ones obviously you know as we said with the ma medical marijuana raising funds for habitats for humanity and things like that. So you can understand it basically, and if it aligns with your with your goals and your ethics, then then that's a fantastic way to choose. So last last week, if you if you can find last week's video, we actually went over the what I call the coin process as four mm -hmm. four step pr process for actually choosing a good investment, making sure you get the good ones because about ten percent of the coins that have been launched in the last six to twelve months have actually gone bust. And of the 90% that are left, some of them have gone down, some of them have gone up. So this will actually help you out. So thank you for sharing. And welcome, Matty. Who, yeah, we won't embarrass you for coming in late, but I'm, I'm really glad you're here, mate. Um, Verna, we'll, we'll get, get to you now if we can, mate. You, you weren't here last week. Can, you, can we hear you? Can you say hi? Hi. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. So, hi, Jeremy. How are you? Tell us a little bit about what you've been looking at or investing into. Uh, look, I'm very, I'm at the beginning stages. So I've been listening to the last two group calls um, yep. that you've made. And I've gone ahead and opened up um, Coinbase. Excellent. And I just purchased a couple of hundred dollars worth of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. <laughs> okay. That's all okay. So was that like yesterday you bought Ethereum or a week ago? Yesterday. Okay, good. You actually bought it while it was down. <laughs> but if you just want to adjust your monitor there, Dale, because we can only see you from like the eyes, the eyes up. 
There we go. Now we can see you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there was a lot, a lot of press last week about um, you know, Bitcoin basically cut in half and Ethereum cut in half and, uh, and a few of the bigger coins that, that basically crashed, as they say. Um, but if you bought Bitcoin for 1,000, in 12 months, you're worth 25,000. And then to go down to, to 10,000 or 12,000, you go, well, who cares? I'm still you know, way, way in front of where I was. But people who bought in just you know, last week, if they bought in at, you know, say 20 odd thousand, then they sort of woke up one day and it was 12,000. They go, what the hell's going on? And it's mostly, mostly through the Asian community. So in, in China and Korea and Singapore, people who have been in Bitcoin and Ethereum for the last 12 months have gone, woohoo, I've just made all this money. And Chinese New Year is coming up. And Chinese New Year is sort of bigger than New Year and, and Christmas combined. Everybody wants to travel. Everybody wants to buy presents. They all want to see their family. So there was a massive sell-off. But the same thing happened in the middle of January last year. The same thing happened in the middle of January the year before. And again, it's led by the Asian community who are just doing a massive sell-off. And then in the last sort of 24, 48 hours, the people from America and, and Australia and Canada and that sort of stuff who don't celebrate Chinese New Year have been jumping in and buying while it's cheap. So it's, it's gone back up again. But um, if, you, if you look at the charts from, you know, say back to 2013, every year, you'll see Bitcoin drops down in the middle of January and then starts to creep back up. And then by April, it's, it's in front again. So good move. So you, you've looked at Ethereum, you understand a little bit about how it works and what it does, or you just think it's a cool name? Yeah, look, I've um, in, read about it and I, I like what it does. Mm -hmm. And the only thing now with me is that I don't know what to do while I'm in there. So I've got the, the wallet, I've got the, the I've purchased the Ethereum, so now I don't know what to do with it. Well, you can treat it like gold. You can just sit on it for the next five years if you want to. Um, if you want to, you can buy other coins. Uh, there's plenty of other coins that'll trade against Ethereum. So you can use Ethereum to buy other things. Um, so today I actually swapped out some Ethereum and I used the Ethereum to buy Monero. Um, and I used Ethereum to buy, what was the other one? Power Ledger. So I could actually swap, swap those because you've you got to pay money to transfer like your Aussie dollars or your US dollars into Ethereum. Then on a lot of the exchanges, you can actually swap like for like and the fees are either zero or, or significantly less. But rather than, you know, if you're on the stock exchange and you bought Qantas shares, you have to sell the Qantas shares, turn them into dollars and then turn the dollars back into Woolworth shares. This way you can just swap straight across and it's far more convenient. So, but, but take notes, make notes, have a look on the, um, the Krillionaire website. So if you watch the last couple of calls, we did name probably about 20 or 30 different coins in there. And there's also a list on the website as well saying, these, these are some and this is what they do. And if you're excited by that, if, you, if your kids love Disney, then you buy the Tron coin. Or if you're you know, into, into complete privacy, then you might buy the Monero. If you, if you like cutting out the power companies and selling your solar power back to the neighbors rather than selling it back to the grid, then you might get behind Power Ledger. So there's a few different things. As I say, align it with your own core values and also look at what other people are, are looking into as well. So, right. Very cool. We're all learning. We're all learning. Awesome. That's the key thing. So Very exciting, I'm glad, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad you've opened a wallet and you've managed to buy some coins. So that's, that's the first two steps. You know, yeah. you've, you've done that, which is excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Cheers. Mr. Pike, what are you up to? Are you there, William? Um, yes, mate. I shall uh, show my face. I'm scoffing my face. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really want any kicks and noises, did we? <laughs> ah, it's all good, mate. So what, what have you been into this week? So um, well, this, is, this is the first time I've uh, come on your call, Jeremy. Um, so uh, yes, oh, I've just been doing um, a, a, a bit of research on um, a, 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 um, a, a few of the ones. I haven't actually seen your website. I'm just trying to cheat and look at it now and try and act intelligent. Good, good yeah, luck. yeah. <laughs> but um, yes, oh, I've, um, I've done a, bought a few things uh, along the way, including Litecoin. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm looking at, um, like as mentioned earlier, stuff in the top 20 or 50, anything over $500 million cap currently. Yeah. Uh, as a long-term hold type scenario. 
And um, yeah, just, um, yeah, I, I don't have any information, but I, I'm just trying to uh, do some research on wax. So I don't know if anyone's got wax on there, but that's one that I'm going to look at this week. Yeah, wax, wax was, was launched a while ago. Um, so it's been trading on the open market for a while. And when I, when I first heard about it, um, they were saying it's, it's for gamers and people who play these online games and, you know, you, you set up your little avatar character and then you say, you know, I want my avatar to wear a cowboy hat or I want it to wear a blue shirt or I want him to have a sword or whatever. And the guy who was actually doing the report on, on wax said, I, I can't remember what the exact figure was, but there was, you know, so many hundreds of billions of dollars that was spent on avatar costumes. 80, for 80, online gamers 80 80 billion there you go you know the figure and it was actually more that they, they spent more money on pretend clothes for pretend avatars than was actually spent on real clothes for clothing real people <laughs> so it was some amazing figures absolutely amazing figures so i think and yeah they, I'm, I'm not part of the gaming community i know people who are um, and they can be quite obsessive about this sort of stuff and spend a lot of money on it. So, you know, whatever floats your boat. You know, it was more, that was like not a buy and hold, but something that I considered that in my um, you know, single digit percentage high risk scenarios are part of my yep. portfolio and my way of thinking, Jeremy. So, yeah, mm. I'll just have a look at it, um, have a little bit more um, of an in-depth understanding of what that is um, and go from there, mate. And I'm yep. a Dario as well, so I've got to do some research to understand where that is at and what that does. Sorry, Cardano? Cardano, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. For um, sure. So I'll just see how the week unfolds with my research of understanding what I'm investing in. Yeah. Yep, yep. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, Matt, what have you been up to? Um, you can hear me there. I'm just trying to. Laugh. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> uh, we can see you, mate. Um, I haven't been up to much since I sent you that message. I haven't found any more about it that um, particular So, yeah, maybe to say it's not providing information, maybe that it's. Not worth following up, I don't know. I just guess I've got a couple of questions. I'm trying to get friendly, to my understanding of, okay, if uh, Jeremy's selling his, um, his brand new Audi to me or something, I'll um, give you whatever it's worth, two bitcoins at the time, and then yeah. from that, you go, okay, no worries. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin goes down, and then, you know, I'm just giving you, say, like $40,000 worth of Bitcoin, and then it's, it's dropped, and next now it's worth 30 grand. Yep. <laughs> about the um, exchange I've just given you. So I guess I'm just looking at it from the perspective of people's um, faith and the why they take value in the coin because of the volatility. So just yeah. Just yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's something that, that most of us haven't had to deal with previously, unless you're a business, unless you're importing. You know, if you were buying, you know, little little teddy bears from China, and you're dealing with, you know, you have to buy the Chinese currency so that you can actually pay these guys in the factory and then they ship the teddy bears over to you. Then, you know, the, the currency fluctuations, you know, the, the last little five minutes on the news where everyone leaves and makes a cup of tea is when they're talking about what the Aussie dollar is against the yen and the euro and that sort of stuff. So it's not important to most of us, which is why it's only the last two minutes of the news. But if you're importing and exporting, then you're actually having to buy other currencies. And this is really what we're doing. You know, with crypto, we're actually buying other currencies. So it depends on you know, how bullish you are on, on the future of Bitcoin. Like you might say, look, I'm going to sell my, my new Audi to someone for two bars of gold. And that's okay because right now, two bars of gold might be worth more than the Audi. Someone gives them to you, but then the gold price goes down tomorrow. What do you do? Well, if you like gold, then you just hang on to it. You, know, you don't have to sell while it's down. And if you, you chose your preferred currency, so you can choose gold, you can choose Ethereum, you can choose Bitcoin or whatever, you're probably going to hang on to it. Sure. I guess yeah, if people go on to say, oh, they have faith in Bitcoin, that's, that's great. That's just, I guess, what we can jump on board and the, um, the faith in the product, hopefully, goes up. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, flip, the flip side's also true for the other guy. Like, he might give you two Bitcoins or two bars of gold, and then all of a sudden the resale value of the Audi goes down because Audi brings out a new model or, you know, Mitsubishi finds a way to make one cheaper or something like that. So we're, we're always taking a risk in any transaction. Yeah, uh, it just okay. depends on, on your attitude. Off, off the track, and I'm just thinking it all in terms of, um, okay, being unregulated and um, untaxable and this sort of thing, which is great because then we're, we get to make a stand where we can um, have a currency and we have more control of it. But I'm just looking from the other point of view of now, say, when you've got local, state, federal governments where it's money being allocated into funds for whatever infrastructure. So in the future, I'm going, well, who's going to pay for that? If some of the government's unregulated, there's no money in the system. Mm -hmm. we're all controlling it, well, then it's going to have to be some form of regulation within that to make that happen, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, this, this is probably a conversation for another call. <laughs> Sorry, uh, too much about it. I'll, I'll yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the, the tax system is one that I'm also passionate about, mate. But, yeah. um, it, you know, you're driving on the bridges and you're driving through the toll roads and a lot of these the infrastructures that you're talking about are actually privately owned. Sure. So there's some corporation who put up $50 million and dug a tunnel and then they take, you know, two or three dollars every time someone drives through the, the tunnel. So it's not actually taxpayer dollars that are, that are paying for those sort of things. That's uh, true. That goes on a lot. So e even, you know, even the provision of the energy pylons and, and these sort of things, a lot of those, those are, you know, private infrastructure. So, you know, the government doesn't do as much as we actually give them credit for, but they're not going to tell you that. If you, if you think the government's going around and fixing all the potholes and feeding the homeless and, and paying for all the schools and hospitals, then, then that's good. They're going, to, they're going to let you believe that, but if you dig down into it, it, it might not be true. So, but I, I, don't, I don't think, even, even if you're making a million dollars a year out of cryptocurrency trading, I don't think that your tax, you know, paying or not paying is not going to affect the government too much. So, yeah, I know I'm I guess this, this is more of a specific question. When you were mm. saying that you've paid um, friends of yours or um, you want to be is it in the Philippines or somewhere with Bitcoin and... Yeah, you know, just, just lean into the microphone, mate. You, you're getting sorry. a bit... Yep. I was just saying, um, if you pay friends of yours overseas with Bitcoin, it's instant transaction and then you're avoiding the fees. Yeah. Um, it's just when they convert it back into whatever it is, the currency, the peso or whatever they're using, then... Yep. Get a few there. But it varies, the fee varies between points, doesn't it? I think like Litecoin was 50 cents for a conversion where Bitcoin's a lot more. Is that right? So yeah, yeah. Bitcoin's significantly gone up since they closed down a lot of the, the Chinese miners. Um, so the, the transaction fees have lifted significantly on that. But a lot of the Chinese mining operations are now moving to Russia. Um, Russia's providing generous incentives to them and, and selling them ele electricity for really, really cheap because they want factories over in Russia to help their economy. Um, but there are other coins where there's, where there's zero transaction fees. Um, one is IOTA. Um, I can't think of the other one right now off the top of my head. But there's, there's a few who actually do zero transaction fees. They just rely on other people in the network. So if you wanted to send me 10 IOTA, um, it would pop up on your phone and say, okay, send Jeremy 10 IOTA. But then it would also pop up saying, you've got to process this transaction and this transaction. So you actually become a little miner and you have to go bing, bing and transfer someone else's money. And then yours will pop up, yours will send. But before yours reaches me, someone else in the world is trying to send money and it'll pop up on theirs. Um, DAG is the other one, which is the guys I spoke to last week in India, DAG. So that, that's also running off this system. And you've got a billion Indians who want to send, send money to other people. But before they send it, they have to process two other transactions. So the, the transaction speed at the moment is about 30 seconds with the DAG coin, but the more people use it, the faster it gets. Yeah, the whole mining concept, is that what you're saying there? You're actually authenticating one of the people's transactions. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, you're using your phone, your electricity and your processing power to actually process that little transaction in two seconds rather than having a giant mining rig which is processing thousands of transactions all day. It That's just relies on the users. Yeah, during the week, I've done a lot of lots of YouTube videos on the mining rigs. I still don't fully grasp it, but as you said, one guy had it set up in his office and he was, I think, you know, 30 bucks a day for this particular one. And 20 yep. bucks a day. But then I started by talking about how this thing was generated. And then these massive mining rigs, they're putting them in Iceland and places all the rest of the because of the heat that they generate as well to make them run without crashing. So, yeah. And as you say, it's 
gets complicated when you start trying to understand the more energy required for the uh, must be to do with the computation for the encryption, and that's to do with how fast it's processed. So hopefully, I understand that. But yeah, you get to what the bank yeah. I mean, the, the miners are basically doing what the banks used to do. You know, they're just verifying the transactions on the way in between me to you. Um, so we, we're cutting out the bank as the middleman, but we're putting someone else as the middleman. And I'm, I'm for one, I'm, I'm happy that it was, you know, little guys in China who used to work for a dollar a day or $2 a day, rather than the banking executives who have had us over the barrel for the last 500 years. And if it moves into Russia and Lithuania and Estonia and some of these other little countries, Iceland, great, you know, sharing the wealth around. Um, but for some... Yeah, that is awesome. I didn't think of it from that perspective. So, yeah, that's definitely... What was the name of that particular um, point you said where the, the, or the, that mining concept was called? Um, yeah, I've, I've just put that in the comments, though. So the, the first and one was IOTA. Was this IOTA and DAG? Yeah, and the other one is DAG, which is the one that's um, the number one coin in India at the moment. So I had a meeting with those guys on Thursday night, I think. Um, I've been I've been chatting to them. So it was one I wasn't aware of, but um, you know, developing nations have had to do whatever they've had to do, yeah. and um, these guys have created a new system. It's just you know, it's it's a number one one over there, and it'll probably be used by a lot of people over here as well because it's already got a billion people as as their market. So I mean, if if you go to some of the ICO sites now, they're actually you know they're saying download our white paper. And it's in English and it's in Chinese and it's in Russian and it's in you know, a few other languages because all of these currencies are now don't have any borders. So we're no longer having the, the Chinese money and the Australian money and the English money or whatever. Um, you can just choose one from anywhere and it doesn't have any borders. It doesn't have any languages completely decentralized. So it's, it's very exciting times. Mm, absolutely. The thing like that, where you mentioned the authentication and can actually be part of it. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, I think there was, I can't, can't remember the statistic, uh, there's 2 billion people in the world um, who have never had a bank account. And, you know, it, when, I, when I lived in Bali, it was 95% of the people in Bali are not registered taxpayers because most of them are just running a little family restaurant or they're selling T-shirts or whatever, and they'll sell for cash and they'll take the cash home. They don't have a bank account. Because, you know, some parts of Indonesia, you need $100 US to even open a bank account. And they never actually accumulate $100 US. So they're just feeding themselves and feeding their family. Never get to open a bank account, never get to, um, to pay taxes, and that's okay. Um, but if they want to actually launch their business and go to the next level and start hiring people and sending money to friends and relatives in other countries, they're going to need to have a bank account. But where this solves the problem is saying anybody who's got a smartphone, if you've got friends or relatives who live on the next island over, then you can just send them, send them money as easily as sending an email. And then you can start to send money to other suppliers, whether it be in China or whether it be in India or Indonesia or wherever, just send money to them as, as easily as you send an email. You don't need a bank account. Yeah, so, so even yeah. So that was Hero, the one that I was talking about then. I think it's Hero Token IO. I'm just typing this off the top of my head. Um, so if you want to Google Hero, I think the link is on the Krillionaire page as well. Uh, so that's that's one that I've bought into because it's it's a massive market out there. It's almost half of the world's population has either never had a bank account or has a bank account that they can't use. Yeah. So. Believe it or not, it's, it's not just a bank account. They're actually being part of a bank or a process as well. So. Yeah, Ver Verna's taking pictures of the notes because she doesn't want to type it. <laughs> uh, which ICO site do you recommend? Um, I, there's, there's literally heaps. I can't even remember the one that I went to today. Um, but it's, it's basically, it's, it's a task for if you're, if you're on Facebook or if you're on Reddit or if you're on somewhere and someone's mentioned the coin, then you can actually search for the coin. Um, there's, I think, a site called bitcointalk.org um, where they actually talk about some of the ICOs, but there's a lot, of, a lot of traffic on Reddit and Facebook and other social media sites. So, the, and, and there's, there's not going to be the best one. It's like saying, which is the best newspaper to read? If you read the Courier Mail, you're going to get biased journalism, and if you read someone else, you're going to get something else. Uh, so it's best to hear about the coin first and then go searching for where the ICO is or where the exchange is. So, good question. Thank you. JT, do you want to say something? Nope. 
Yeah, you there? Yeah, there you go. We've got you. Yeah, I, I thought I'd just duck out in the yard and do a few things while people were talking, then got caught out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't listen to anybody else. You're the most important guy in the room. That's ex exactly right. <laughs> No, mine's been a um, like a very short, sharp learning curve, just like everyone else's. It's um, kind of interesting to hear um, some of the coins you're actually speaking about uh, this afternoon because they're a couple that I bought into on the weekend. So the Cardona and IOTA. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'd better jump on the Sea of Coins team. You guys were talking about that last week and it yeah. sort of went up the rise and then dropped down. And I thought, oh, that's a good opportunity to get in, but it's gone back down again. But that's all right. We're just going to sit and hold. Yeah, yeah. Um, ICOs, I'm in Park Gene. Um, park it's a gene. Park Gene, peer to peer parking. And that's sort of, it was <laughs> funny that I found that, like, it, because it came off the back, we went for a trip to Adelaide. And, you know, the absorbent fees e e e e that people pay for parking, you know, 10 bucks an hour or less than an hour, you know, yeah. and that's nothing compared to what, you know, some people are paying, you know, in these big capital cities around the world, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a year. Yeah. So I thought, oh, well, that seems to make sense to me. Okay. Yeah, I've often thought like sometimes, you know, you have to go and you have to put $4 in the meter because you think you're going to be there for an hour and after 15 minutes you leave and then you go, oh, that, that money's just wasted. That's but right, yeah. Other, other people who have got a, a car park underneath their office and they're not using it. So yeah. they actually lease it to somebody else. That's right. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's G-E-N-E, -E, Park Gene? G correct, yeah. Okay. So it's um, only like the pre-sale is only just finished and I think they've, oh, they've probably been on for about a, like the IC have been going for about a week. So there was a 35% bonus on purchases mm -hmm. um, and I think it might be about 25% bonus at the moment. So, yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So it's like the Uber of car parking spaces. That's it. And I think that's how they almost brand it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, very cool. Anything else that you've seen that you like? Uh, not in not my ICOs or anything like that, sort of been caught up with going, getting ready to go back to school and things like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's just been interesting, like, a, like, you know, starting the way that I've sort of started off and how it's sort of progressed, you know, from Coinbase, just having your wallet there and buying your, your kind of basic coins, then moving on to CoinSpot. Um, yeah. That seemed to take forever for me to be verified so I could actually get on um, and BT, uh, BTC markets. But, you know, it's interesting when you see the differences in the price of the coins and what they're trading between the different markets. You know, at one stage there, I was looking Coinbase to CoinSpot. It was nearly a 20% difference. Ah, you've discovered the secret of arbitrage, mate. Yeah. So all, of, all I was thinking was bloody CoinSpot, the, uh, no, Coinbase. For yeah. some reason, you can only buy $250. Well, that's my limit for the week. So I was right. thinking, how easy would it be if you were uploading, you know, ten thousand dollars at a time and just transferring across, and you know, even with fees and things like that, if you walk away with a lazy ten percent on a couple of hours' work, that's yep, not bad. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, did you get verified with a driver's license or a passport? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was a driver's license because we we're away at the time. Yeah. 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 If you if you've got a passport, get verified with the passport. Okay. And see if that increases your limit. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I might do that tonight. See if it makes yeah. a difference. Because I mean, pretty pretty well, like everyone. You know, I, I generalise a lot. You'll you'll find that out. Everyone has has a driver's license. So if there's people in the line to get verified, there might be two thousand people ahead of you, but yeah. less people have a passport. So the guy who's in charge of verifying passports is just going to be going through them like that, oh, and you're going to be on on a higher limit because a passport is a, a higher identity document. Because you can you, you can use a an expired passport as ID, whereas you can't use an expired driver's license as ID for some reason. Okay. Um, whatever yeah, that one is. One of the things I noticed too, like um, cost-wise, Coinbase, I, I was kind of, I don't know, and I was kind of putting in little bits at a time, you know, I'd say, I think I'll buy $50 of Litecoin and then I was buying $50 of Ethereum and, and then I'd kind of put in $200 and didn't know whether or not I was paying a 4% fee or I was paying a $4 fee every time I was depositing money. Right. But then with CoinSpot, is it POI? Is that the 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 money transferring system? I can't ex uh, Oh, Poly. 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 Yeah, that's it. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it with no cost. So yeah. I transferred money straight, like, a, and it was instant. The money was I transferred it, came up with verification. I had to put in my you know access number and password, and straight away the money was there. How scary was that though? You give yeah, it, you well, give someone else your net banking ID. <laughs> well, I know, I know. 
Uh, yeah, there was, uh, I think it was Coin, CoinSpot or Coinbase actually turned off Poly for a while, or the banks turned them off because they were just so overwhelmed with so many people buying in. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if they've actually turned it back on. It was off. It was off for about a week and a half. But um, yeah, I, I, I use Poly today on CoinSpot. Um, yep. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit scary giving someone else my ID and my password, but I thought, oh well, what the hell. Yeah. Um, Worst thing well, this, to do is bring my bank account, right? That's right. And this is a secondary bank account anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There's not a hell of a lot of money there. So, Yeah, yeah. Very good. Mm. Um, Werner, I hope you're taking a photo of this because William's just answered all of your questions for you uh, for all of the ICOs. So thank you, William. There's like 10 different sites there that we'll actually be able to, to look at. So... Um, all righty. Jenny, do you want to say something? No. Nope. Okay. No, nope. no, um, I'm just battling <laughs> traffic at the moment. So um, probably best that I focus on what's in front of me. Okay. Well, you, you do, yeah, you, you worry about the traffic. Don't worry about the coins. Um, so is there any other questions, silly questions or other questions? Mining, super tax, We've got some time before I'm going to cut you all off. There was, there was somebody who was asking about mining last week. Um, and I mentioned that I'd actually connected with a, with a guy here in Brisbane who was making mining rigs. And um, I'd have to look up the price again, but I think it was for, for $3,000, you get a mining rig that you just basically turn it on and walk away. Um, and you pull between seven to seven to $20 a day out of that um, just as a passive income and sorry for four four thousand dollars you're making seven to twenty dollars a day um, for a five thousand dollar rig you're making fourteen to forty dollars a day um, just in mining bitcoin and you can switch it over so it mines ethereum for you instead if you want to mine ethereum if you prefer that to bitcoin um, kodak the company that went bankrupt after not backing digital cameras they've come out and launched a mining rig that they've put out. So, you know, Kodak's rebirthed itself as, as the latest technology, except the, the Kodak mining rig is 3,400. So it's a little bit cheaper than what I've mentioned here. However, you, when, you, when you buy it, you're only leasing the machine for two years. So at the end of two years, they actually take the machine from you. Um, and above a certain quota, they will actually take 50% because they're leasing the asset to you rather than you actually owning it. So eventually, anybody's looking for a cheaper mining rig, just be careful of the fine print uh, because you might be signing a lease agreement rather than a purchase agreement. And you might be signing an agreement to split the profits with the person who actually is selling it to you or leasing it to you. So the ones we're talking about is just, it's straight up computer. It's got a couple of graphics cards in it. You plug it in and you set it, you forget it. And as I say, you can come back and you can change it to, to another coin if you like. Um, but all the profits are yours and automatically, once it gets up above $20, it automatically transfers into your wallet. So you literally don't even need to go in there and, and collect the profits. It's just done automatically for you. It's open source software. It's freeware. You don't need to pay a license to Windows or, or anybody else. Um, so there's, there's no stings in the tail on that one. So that's passive income. If you want to say you want to earn a little bit more because you've got some free time on your hands, are you able to potentially earn more than that? Um, well, you just get, need to get a bigger mining rig. There's okay. no way for you to sit there and manually process people's transactions because it's an okay. algorithm that's solved by the computer. True. Unless you can, you can solve algebraic equations to 16 decimal places in your head, I probably wouldn't try. Jeremy, I've got a, a silly question. Excellent. Uh, it's in regards to uh, private and public keys. Yes. Am I, I, when I signed up and I, um, uh, you know, got my wallet, was I supposed to get the private and public key when I completed the process? So when does that, when do I get that? Um, it depends on the wallet. So some of them won't have a, a private key. Some of them will have like a, a 12 word phrase called the seed phrase. Um, and sometimes they don't even show you that. Like it's just, it's, it sets up the, the thing on your, on your computer 
and it's only if you go into settings and backup that it actually shows you the 12 word phrase or the private key. So some of them don't show you the back engine. Some of them do. It's just one of those things. Um, but if, if you've got like a, a five year old computer and you've opened like a, a coin spot or a blockchain account on it, and then all of a sudden your computer dies and you throw it out and then you go, Oh, holy shit. I'll try to open up my new account unless you've got that private key or unless you've got that 12 word phrase, you've lost all your money. Wow. The guys, okay. the guys who open it, it's not like you can go to the bank and say, I've forgotten my password or I've forgotten my pin number. It's gone. Nobody can help you because nobody knows that secret code except for you. So it's up, it's up to you to actually back up the wallet. And you can put it onto like a little USB or you can write it down on a piece of paper and take a photo of it and you know, save the photo in your Dropbox under a password security or something like that. Um, but yeah, as, as I say, like some of them will show you up front when you're setting it up, some of them will yeah. have it in the background, but it's up, so, up to you to find that and, and keep that secret. And oh, so I need to actually, I'm in Coinbase, so I need to go yeah. and see where that is and, and um, try to find it. Yeah, I, I forget the, the exact interface for Coinbase. Um, I've, I've got Coinbase and CoinSpot and Copay and Blockchain and I do and a whole bunch of other weird ones. Um, and some, some of them will use, use a different system. So some of them will have like just this hexadecimal, you know, long string of numbers and letters. Yeah. And some of them will have the, the little um, QR code and some of them will have the, the 12, 12 words. Now, whatever it has is whatever it has, but you need to keep that a secret. The public token, of course, you can show your public key to me and that's how I send you $5. Okay. So. I'll yeah. go look for it. Yeah, it's like if, I, if I've got your BSB and account number, I can put money into your bank, but I can't take it out. Yeah. But if I know your BSB and your account number and your password, then hell yeah, I can take money out of your account. And if you lose all three, then you're stuffed. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Vernon, depending on which exchange you've got, okay, when you go to the exchange, I haven't worked with Coinbase, but on CoinSpot, they actually have a wallet and you just use the public key there. There's no private key. All the exchanges actually hold the private keys for anything held on the exchange. But if you are transferring to a Nano or a Trezor, okay, it's important for you to, to take action with what Jeremy just said. So I'm just trying to understand, was your question regarding what's on exchanges or what's actually in physical or wallets like Exodus? Oh, okay. Um, in, my question was more around, um, you know, I know that you need to have the private and public key to be able to access your funds or, or move your money, money around. And when I signed up with Coinbase and got my Ethereum wallet, uh, Ethereum, there was um, no numbers given to me. There was no public numbers. There was no private. I... Yeah. Okay, because no, Coinbase is the exchange. Once exchange. The numbers, because the exchange holds those numbers. Yep. You just have to make sure that you're the only person who is actually, actually um, um, getting into Coinbase. Hence, you'd always make sure that you've got two-step Google authentication. Yeah. So nobody can use your password. So yeah, I've got that. A, so as an example, on CoinSpot, which is similar to Coinbase, when you want to transfer the money, you just do it within the exchange without a private key because the exchange holds a private key you don't even oh. know what that is you only oh. know what the public key is because it will, it will show you when it sends it to wherever you oh. want to go oh okay and that's the key that i need to store no not when you're on an exchange only if you have a private hard hardware wallet or you have uh, what, like Blockfolio, they introduced that, Jeremy, or Exodus or other ones, you'll need to keep the information. But if it's on the exchange, or right, they hold the private key, you've just got to make sure you have the only password and, and the Google Authenticator to take your money away. So you can oh. move your money 
straight off any exchange to any other exchange or private wallet without a private key. Is that oh, awesome. Right? That, that, that's, yeah, that, that's a much better explanation. Thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. So there's, there's different systems. And mm -hmm. you know, some, sometimes like you, you can buy Ethereum and Litecoin and Bitcoin on Coinbase, but you can't buy IOTA. Yeah. So to buy IOTA or Cardano, you might have to change your Ether from that exchange that you're on across to another one. And at that stage, Jeremy, will I need then to know this, these numbers or because it's on the exchange, all I, even I'm moving from exchange to exchange, all yep. I need is my two authentication steps. Um, and there's, there's even even some of them which have the little QR code. So like you might open an exchange on your computer and then you hold your phone up in front of it and goes bing and it recognises the... Yeah. Yeah, it recognises the QR code. So there's, there's, there's quick and easy ways around it. Um, I've, I've had trouble when I've had two exchanges on the computer. Um, and you can just copy and paste the code across because you can't take a picture of your own computer screen with using your own computer monitor. Um, otherwise, you know, if I'm, if I'm going back the other way and they don't have the QR code, then I'll actually copy and paste the, the 16 digit code and send myself an email or a, or a Facebook message or something like that. So I can send it from my computer to my phone or from my phone to my computer and I'm the only person who sees that. And do you need to keep that number that you've just used? Not if it's the public key. Okay. Because that's like your BSB and account number. So I, I could literally walk into the bank and say, look, I want to give money to Verna and, you know, provided I know you, they yeah. might actually, they, they probably wouldn't give me the BSB and account number, but they'd make sure that it goes into your account. Whereas the private one is, is where you access your funds. And if, you, if you're having these offsite wallets like William's talking about, um, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't stress about it too much because if someone hacks into the exchange and steals, you know, I've, I've got six different exchanges. If they steal a thousand dollars from here or five hundred dollars from there, it's not going to kill me. Mm. Uh, if I had umpteen million dollars in Bitcoin, I wouldn't want to store it on the exchange no. because if someone's going to be a hacker and they're going to rob someone, they're more than likely going to rob the bank. Right? They're going to rob the big exchange where there's millions of accounts. They're not going to try and come and rob me personally or hack into my computer personally. So that's why a lot of people who've got really big balances, they say, don't keep your money on the exchange because the exchanges are a target. And they'll have their little private thing and they'll store it on their USB or they'll put it on another computer that's not connected to the internet and they'll hide it away in a sock drawer somewhere. And then when they want to trade, when they want to buy, they'll jump onto the exchange, they'll transfer it from their private wallet to the exchange They'll do their transaction, then they'll pull it back off, then they'll stick it away. Now, there's a right. word for those kind of people. You know, they may be paranoid, they may be super cautious, they may be whatever, and that's okay. Mm. You know, I'd, I'd probably feel differently if I had hundreds of millions of dollars, but I don't. So I'm not stressed about it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Matt said he's going to tattoo his on his butt. So. <laughs> <laughs> Probably only only seven, 17 women in the whole of Australia will be able to know what his account number is. <laughs> one of them being his massage therapist and one being his doctor. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> thank you, Matt, for keeping it, um, yeah, keeping it highbrow. That's a classic. All right. Um, if you've watched the other calls, you'll know a bit more about the mining. If you want to set up the mining rig, uh, there's a possibility for setting up um, superannuation funds um, because, you know, you might have a couple of thousand dollars to play with in your own name and put into some of these coins. But if someone gives you a really hot tip and you go, shit, I wish I had $20,000 or I wish I had $50,000. If you have that in your super fund, then you can actually do that through one of these exchanges. Uh, there's only one that I've found in the whole of Australia who will handle superannuation money. Um, if, you, if you find another one, please let us know. Um, yep, that's the one, William. That's the only one I've found. So, and that, that's on the Krillionaire side as well. Jeremy? Yeah. You mate, so um, uh, CoinSpot will now accept superannuate self and super funds. Oh, okay. I've just completed yeah. the second size. Yep. And um, 
BTC markets will in the future. They sent me an email to say they're upgrading their system. But uh, definitely independent reserves are a good start for people. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right, super funds. Um, we've covered ERC20 and ERC721 in another call. We've talked a little bit about tax and any other silly questions we might we might wind up early tonight we've got 10 more minutes and no one's going to laugh at you except for, except for matt's butt well i mean that was that was just there to laugh at but we won't laugh at you for silly questions we'll just laugh at you for talking about your butt no no more silly questions no more other coins to share exciting ones um I've, I've actually been looking like one, once i went down the medical marijuana rabbit hole um i spent about an hour looking through that and it's amazing how they're using the using the technology so i'll put up their bud bow um which is one of the ones uh, we talked about fusex on another on another call which is the one that holds 15 different um 15 different cryptocurrencies and 10 credit cards on the one card um, but yeah, the, the medical marijuana one led me down a rabbit hole where there's about a dozen um, companies in Australia as well, not just not just cryptocurrencies, um, about a dozen different companies in Australia who are actually trading in medical marijuana and making smokables and edibles and all sorts of things. Um, some big pharmaceutical companies are using it. And they're saying it's, it's amazing the number of discoveries they're getting now because for the last 80 odd years, marijuana has been illegal. So they couldn't actually get it in vast quantities and they couldn't test it like they've tested every other plant that's available on the market to make you know, beauty products and, and healthcare products and that sort of stuff. And so now it's been legalized for, for medical use in America and in Australia, they can actually test it and go, wow, this thing actually cures asthma and it cures gingivitis and it cures this and it cures skin diseases. And they're just going nuts with it at the moment. So it's amazing how they're, they're using it for animals and for people, skin care, healthcare, treating anxiety and depression and autism and all sorts of other things. So that was a bit of fun. If anybody wants the details on that, um, you can shoot me an email. It's not, it's not really a trillionaire thing. It's more of a stock market thing. So. Matt, Matt's going to sign up for the testing, but um, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's pretty high tech. I mean, I, I can't wait for them to come out with something like that with normal medications because there's some people who are in a legitimate amount of pain and they get, you know, Oxycontin or they get, I don't know, pseudoephedrine or morphine or something like that. And if someone knows you're on those, they can break into your house, they can steal those pills, they can sell them to their friends, they can sell them on the black market. But with this one that actually uses your thumbprint and your, and your iPhone, you literally can't steal someone else's med medication unless you steal their thumb. So <laughs> that turns it from a misdemeanor into a major felony. So um, it'll be interesting to see if they, if they use that for others. Sorry, JT, you got something to add? Oh, sorry, Matty talking that. Um, that's being serious now for a moment. I was just going to say, yeah, I'm interested in that because you, like, you know, yep. see oil and this sort of stuff, even if, you know, it hasn't got the THC in it necessarily, but it's still got the other medicinal properties of medical, you know, medical use, yep. you know, tradition and that sort of thing. So definitely, I'm interested in finding out more for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's actually pictures on the on the um, Egyptian stele of of marijuana leaves. They used to use it for for painkillers and to to treat sort of anxiety and that sort of stuff as well. So it's thousands of years old. It's just like as I say, the last eighty years where it's been banned, so it hasn't been subject to all the scientific thing. It's been demonised a lot, but you know, there's people who get drunk and and beat up other people, and people who get drunk and and do terrible things. Um, but I've never heard of anybody going on a marijuana what rampage and, and beating anybody up or, or killing anyone. Yeah, so, I know some, um, I won't, 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 won't just some, I'll say elderly people that have been trialling it for, you know, those reasons that we're just talking about, so yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it might not be your ideal cup of tea, but it's, it's probably a safer alternative than some of the other drugs that are out there. Oh, so, yeah. 
Very cool. All right. There's no more questions. We'll, we'll, we'll finish up. We'll make it a, we'll make it an early night. Um, but if you if you got some some great information that you want to share with the group, shoot it through to me, and I'll put it on the on the website so everyone can access it. You got something else, mate? Nope. Just a bit of background noise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. Thank you. Thank you, Verna. I hope you've you've learned some valuable things. Definitely. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah, it's a big learning curve for everybody. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. We've all got our L plates on. Some of us might have been learners for three months or three days or six months, but um, there's no one here who's got like 10 years experience because it simply didn't exist. So we're all just helping each other and um, all learning from each other. And yeah, with, with over 2,000 coins to look at, it's, it's far too big a job for any one person to say, yes, yes, I'm an expert on the space. I mean... I used to think I was an expert on the stock market because I could name the top 200 stocks and all their little codes. But once you get into hundreds and, and thousands, then nobody can do it. So you need, it, need a team of people to help you and look at different things. So thank you again. And um, this recording will be up on, the, up on the website in the next 24, 48 hours if you want to share it with other people. And make sure you watch the other two to, ca to catch up to speed. And next week, please come along to share a couple of coins that you've looked at so that we can all give you our feedback on whether we think they're good or wonderful and we can share with you the coins that we've found out as well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, See, ya. Thanks, See you. See everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.